Welcome to the Warren Cycling Podcast. My name is Dean Warren. I'm in Sarasota, Florida. And I'm Randy Warren, and I'm in Niles, Michigan. Yeah, you've been someplace else the last couple of podcasts. It's episode 327. It is June 14th. Happy Flag Day. I think it's a forgotten holiday, though, right? Flag Day? I've always thought about Flag Day. Maybe because I think about more because tomorrow's my birthday, but Flag Day, I don't think it's celebrated. I was going to say, it's also the day before your birthday, yeah. 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 But it, and I'm sure Carrie, Carrie, my wife, puts out a flag for most holidays, and I'm sure for Flag Day she has a flag out today. So she remembers it, and then the neighbors will be like, oh, it must be some day because there's a flag out in the Warren's house. So. Did, did Dad put up the flag at home there? I reminded Mom earlier, I talked to her, that said it's flag day, but dad was not available, I so, yeah. My guess is yes. I, I washed my gravel bike underneath the flag pole earlier today, but I didn't notice if there was a flag on it or not. All right, well, this, guess. this is uh, not a podcast about flag day. It's about the bicycle racing that's going on. Fun with... <laughs> it's what? You ever see the show, Fun with Flags? Was, um, was the a, one was that the, the Big Bang made fun of? I mean, no, they, they did it. They, they did it. Yeah. Sheldon's uh, thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The gravel scene behind you is um, kind of uh, part of what what's been going a lot in your riding because you were at Unbound, which is we were mentioning that at our last podcast, a huge event, and, and that's where you were um, getting ready for, and it was a big event. It was. It was. Uh, weather played a factor as it can and more so i think that mud section so a 200 mile gravel race one of the premier um, gravel events um, in the world really it's it's been yeah, around for yeah. a long time and and uh, a different name before um 30, 30 Kansas. Kansas. yeah so yeah it attracted a huge international field and the top uh, pros they had a separate start and it came down to seven seven riders finishing together at the top end and, and usually the guys that do gravel aren't the highest fastest sprinters it doesn't yeah. seem the ones well, that have been doing well but um keegan swenson man he he's been on a tear this year and he deservedly won i think ahead of um, some of the other top guys so you know some are retired professional road riders like lawrence tendam has really put a lot into Riding after riding all those years in the pro peloton, but um, yeah, you you though were in the sixty plus category. You guys you mass started with the the group. It must have been pretty chaotic getting out. But what ten miles in, you hit a big mud section like a how long was it? Four mile mud section, ten mile mud section. I don't know. It was a big mud section that was hard to ride through and it wrecked havoc on equipment and it was just a big slog, wasn't it? Yeah, this year was the first year too. Apparently, it's the first year I've done it. But the, the pros started ten minutes before, actually, a little more than that, I think, ahead of ahead of the rest of the field. So the pro men first started, and then two minutes later, the pro women started. And and then apparently the pros thirty forty guys. Um, I'm not sure how many there were, but thirty forty formed a group off the front before even the mud section. And then in my group, there was about forty, probably fifty people that were off the front as well, the remaining several thousand people who were, who were racing. And um, yeah, it was, I thought that my plan was to sit in with that big group for as long as possible. And I had to make a few, it was a little chaotic at the beginning, a few efforts to make sure I was with that lead group. But when I was with them, I settled in, I thought, this is great. We're just gonna ride like this for 80 some miles. <laughs> and then, uh, and then you know, once we get the first man to rest up, then we'll, break up more because that, that's what's happened in the past i know a lot of years but then at mile 11 yeah we hit this huge mud area and they told us the day before even too that they had a, a detour prepared and that they would use that if it was too bad but then apparently the race director decided that too bad was almost impossible <laughs> and they would make it more epic so they left it in and yeah we were passing those elite right i passed nico roach at one point and I said, "Hey, Nico," and he patted me on the back. "Hey, how's it going?" <laughs> but but then, so like what, you know, an hour. When you say past him, are are you both riding, or are you both like hike a biking through the mud? He was hike biking. I think I was too at the time, but I was riding. I rode a lot. Everybody went to the shoulders, which they weren't supposed to do. We rode in the grass, and and I had tires that weren't supposed to be that good in the mud, but yet they were pretty good. I rode a lot of it. So I came out of that in a really good spot, like 40th place overall in the elite, not the pro or the elite, but the everybody else. 
Um, but still really good though for a 60 plus kind of guy. And I rode in that spot for like an hour or 105, 10 miles <laughs> to really far off, off the front, you know, and a big lead in my age group and stuff. So when I went by Nico, I was riding pretty well. It was, it was pretty good, but he did catch and pass us though. Uh, probably an hour and a half, two hours later. And I was with a group of four or five guys who were riding really well together. We were making good time he yet. Nico right came up behind us. Solo. Huh? He, was yeah. solo. Yeah. he caught us and passes us immediately. <laughs> Didn't even, I don't know if he took any drafts at all. I just kept going. So it just shows the difference between the elite riders and everybody else, because I was riding with the guys who were finishing, you know, really high up in their age group or high up in the amateur division. And yet, yeah, Nico just, he just flew by us and, and kept rolling. And he ended up finishing, I don't know, I, I forget, 30 or 40th in the in the pros too. So he actually did okay. There were a number of pros who yeah, lost their derailers and, and you know, it was it was bad. I mean, they had a huge attrition rate. The in the extra long version, less than half the people finished. I think it was like two thirds didn't finish because they rode through the night when it rained off and on a lot. And then our race was really hot at some points, and then it had really freezing rain. And I had a flat then that I had trouble fixing. But, but early, earlier, I'm sorry, go back a little earlier. Yeah. You lost yeah. one of your bottles oh. that had a lot Media. of your. Yeah, immediately at the beginning of the race. Yeah, but when we first hit the gravel, the gravel, it was some washboard, and it bounced a little bit. And then I hit another piece, and then, yeah, my 32 ounce bottle that had half my nutrition in it fell off. So I had one 32 ounce bottle, and then I had a 24 ounce bottle with um, just some electrolyte carb drink in the back, uh, and then I had I think one gel. So that put me behind for sure in hydration. And then having to work so much harder in that section of mud, which was about four to five miles long, um, that was much more work than I thought. And then working after that too, with like four or five people instead of six people, instead of you know a group of 60 people or 50 people, I had to do more work too. So I entered the first manned feed station at, you know, mile maybe 70, yeah, 76, 67, yeah. 67, yeah, something like that, 76. I can't remember now. It was only a week ago. <laughs> but but um, anyway, and I, so I, I, I still had like a, yeah, like an eight minute lead on the next guy, um, you know, an, an hour lead on third place, I think, in my age group. And I and I jumped in another group of people who were working really well at that point. There was a pro guy and his teammate was pulling like five of us along and they didn't ask for any help. So I rode with them. But then at mile 93, though, my, I kind of gave out a little bit. But still, even a mile, you know, so then I was probably like 10, 15 minutes maybe ahead of the second place. But then a mile 105, I was still eight minutes up. And then I had started cramping. I had to walk up a hill. Oh, I got to the rest stop at mile 122 or something like that. And I spent 26 minutes there just recuperating. Um, but then I did recuperate and I started riding really well again. And then I flatted when it was rain. pouring down rain in the cold. Yeah. And I, I, a plug didn't work. It was a cut, a pretty big cut. And then I put a tube in and that didn't work. And then I was out of quick fills. I used two of them already. So I had to hand pump another tube, which did work, but that was a full half hour as well. And then I rode, um, okay. And then, uh, Gillard Adi, my teammate, and uh, one of my athletes, my coach caught me and we went into the last man rest stop together at 167 miles because that was 167 and then i i changed my bottles out and i you know cleaned my bike up a little bit and i was got ready to go out but then i sat down for a moment and i just crashed my, my body just crashed out and uh -huh. i told gaylor just to keep going so he went and he got second in the 60 plus um age group and then yeah i just i just and if it was 10 miles to go i could have gotten out of finish and i'm sure i could have finished even in that case but i would have been just crawling on the way in probably yeah. so i I, so I gave up the ghost. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So that was a, it was a tough so race for sure. And I, after all. <laughs> yeah. Very much so then. Yeah. Yeah. But this last weekend though, we did the world's qualifier though in Canada. And even then I didn't win though. I got second place in my age group. So I did get second place. It was a very tactical race. A lot of dirt roads. Um, uh, it was a 56 mile race. So considerably shorter <laughs> than the unbound, but it was, it was decent. It was three and a half hours uh, riding. Uh, racing and it had a 2.5 kilometer mud section <laughs> that we had to ride through again but it was not clay mud like an unbound where it stuck to your frame but more like a swampy kind of section and so was, there was some drier single track and then double track and then mud sections and you had to dismount a couple of times to get over some obstacles and and so that was a, a definitely a slower spot and the guy the first time through it in my age group 
who got um, second overall in our short wave to a 13 year old junior kid <laughs> who was apparently super, super strong. Um, they got away and I could see them a little ways off when I came out of the mud bog section, but they were in a group of like five or six at that point and they rode away. And so then I was with a pretty big group and it kept whittling down, whittling down, whittling down. And, and then with the, um, towards the end of the race, there was like 8K to go and there was a short steep hill and I got rid of one guy there. And then there was a, one last little bump and I got rid of the last guy there and then I came in second place. Um, so that was, it was, it was good. It was a fun race. It was good. But I, but I got beat by this guy from Colorado who was super strong. Yeah. 60 yeah, year old guy. And he was, he was super tough. Yeah. And I heard that in the road race, state road race a couple weeks before he rode his gravel bike with 40 C slicks on it. <laughs> and he, and he rode away from most of the gravel guys too. I guess he was riding with Norm Alvis. So I don't know if he rode away and won, but um, uh, yeah, he, so he, so he'll definitely be somebody I have to watch at a uh, nationals for sure. But depending upon the course, you know, I, I think I still, I'm certainly among the best guys, but yeah, I got beat. And, but Gaylord Adi won then his group 65 plus, and there's this really cool UCI blue with world championship stripe kind of thin striped Jersey he got for, for, for being a, Qualifying, yeah. So, but I qualified too. The top 25% qualified. So I think we only had like 13 guys in my age group. So um, being second place, I definitely qualified. So, um, and then Gaylord qualified, and then another guy from near Asheville, he won the 70 plus, and he's asked me to coach him too. So, um, yeah, I'll have three of us going to to Worlds this year. Italy, you said it's in Italy. Yeah, where Italy, is it? Italy, yeah. Well, near Venice, kind of, but toward. Uh, when is it? Towards. It's in October. October. All right. Yeah. So, yep. Good stuff. Well, um, well, you're doing all that gravel racing. There's been a couple uh, world tour stage races that are really kind of the last big tune-ups for before the Tour de France, which, wow, let's see, is this 14th of June. Tour is starting, what, on the 1st of July this year? Soon. Just over two, yeah. two and a half weeks. Not even two and a half weeks, so... Um, yeah, it's it's yeah. Been crazy too because my understanding is Vindigo's team at the Dauphine did not was not all the Tour de France prospective teammates, which is unusual, right? I, I didn't I didn't I was able to catch as much because I've been doing a lot of traveling, but it seemed like and certainly Sepp Kuss wasn't there because he just did the Giro right. and he'll be on the team. He, was on it, yeah. he so, told me, yeah, he he asked me when I talked to him if I because I was, wasn't sure when I might be at another race. He said maybe. Maybe at the tour in July, so I was like, oh, okay, I guess you're going to go here I knew. But it was kind of, it wasn't a big surprise. Well, that Sepp would do um, back to no, back Grant. Especially you know, when he really. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And then uh, Chrysler was supposed to go, but he crashed hard. Yeah. So he's not going to be the yeah. team. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, the you know, Jonas yeah. Yeah. was super strong, but he didn't have the big uh, competition there that will be. I mean, he's got Adam Yates chasing him, who's like maybe one of the top yeah. support riders for a team. Doing a good job. But, yeah. yeah. Sure. But not not at the same caliber. But, you know, it's a big question mark. Of course, Teddy Pagata, how recovered will he be? Will his yeah. wrist healed enough? And, I mean, I kind of think that it will be, but it's still a question mark. He did lose some training. So, yeah, he, he lost some training and then he's riding inside and, yeah, yeah he was going to yeah, just do the Tour de Slovenia anyway, which just started today. Did you see? Uh, uh, I saw that. Uh, yeah, stop. Tour de Slovenia. Yeah. They got a couple Spinach. strong guys, could Dylan Grunewald, and one stage one. Usually, oh, there's not a lot of big um, world tour teams at the Tour of Slovenia, but let's see. Byron Victorious is there because uh, Phil Bilhaus got second. Uh, oh, Human Powered Health is there. They got fourth today. So, uh, or Hans Gora. I think those are the world tour teams. UAE. Yeah, you have heard health. Stanislaw, how do you pronounce that yeah, one? Yeah, I wasn't even going to try. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, close, Machete, yeah. Matteo well, Machete, who, who, who I think he won earlier for Q36.5. He was uh, third place today. So. Yeah, that's good for them, too, being up on the podium for the first day. Yeah, he's. Q36.5 is probably not has quite as much success as they're hoping to have early on. Well, you talked to Joey about that, so yeah, it was there. They yeah, it seemed like he they said that they were farewell, but they were hoping for more. Yeah, and they and they've been. He sounded like he thought that it was they were gelling well, and they had a good team atmosphere, and things were going well for the team. They just hadn't gotten quite this number of results they were hoping for, but you know they're they're, they're still racing well. Yeah, well, it's 
not easy <laughs> ever to get results like with the top yep. teams going on. Um, Oh, I just skipped down here. I'm seeing because uh, amateur national. Okay, right behind me. I, we didn't mention that my picture today is this my son Taylor racing for CS Velo at the Barrio Logan. I mean, he was just uh, the only CS Velo rider there because he, he he lives in San Diego, and it's a it's local yeah. local criterion that's been going on for a long time. Had a pretty good list of, of winners, oh, yep. um, including Taylor. There's a years state ago. Yeah. yeah, and so I got to photograph and watch Taylor race, but he is with his team now at Amateur Nationals. His team's not registered as a pro team, but they're a, a top amateur team. And I just looked at a couple of results. They can do both. They can do amateurs, yeah, can do... nationals, and they can do pro nationals. So it's nice that they can race back. And they're close together this year. And so both in... Yeah, Roanoke, Virginia yeah, Roanoke. right now, and then uh, Knoxville. Knoxville again for the pros, yeah, coming up. Um, and... Six six hours, eight hours away, something like that. Yeah. So, not big surprise, I guess, that AJ August, which I think we're yeah. it, says, it says Andrew August. I mentioned Andrew to Taylor. He said AJ. You mean? So I, I guess we didn't know he goes by AJ. <laughs> oh, okay. So we'll know that now. One by over a minute. Yeah, won the time trial. So, junior rider, very strong. I mean, he's won some races in Europe. Uh, won the stage at. The Oakland stage in, at Redland, so that's someone we're definitely keeping our eye on. AJ August, so um, and Vigo Moore, he's also. I think he, isn't he the cyclocross rider? That's a good cyclocross rider. He won the um, under twenty. I think Andrew cross rider too, but yeah. AJ. AJ is yeah. Also a cyclocross racer. Right, yeah. and I see Samantha Scott won the uh, women's individual time trial. Juniors, juniors, juniors. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. And then do you see though too? There's a there's the Tour de Bois. Oh yeah, I just saw uh, that too. Yeah, because Tyler Stites was second today. He uh, was yeah. between two uh, Canadians. It's a Canadian race, Tour de Bois. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty good stage race too. Um, I don't know if it's gone on every year. I mean, COVID kind of messed up a lot of races, stage races, and got postponed. And I think most of them are back on the calendar right now since we had. All the uh, the earlier ones in the U.S., the Tour Redlands, Tour Gila, and Joe Martin, but um, Tour de Bose was right up there too. Is one of the big stages oh, yeah, in yeah, North sure. America. You see, there's also a next tour, a Giro Next Generation too. The 46th one in, in Italy is going on right now too. Yeah, I don't think there's any events there though. No, I saw. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw yesterday that it was Luke Lamperti one. Stage three. Was oh, it easy there? I didn't see this. Today was a. Yeah, there it is. Oh, there there he, is. Yep, he won stage three. Okay, Artem Smith's also there too from a Higgins Berman action too. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's. Is it? it oh yeah, good one. Luke Lepardi. He was, was 120th today. It was it was a long, long, long climb of the finish today. So, yeah, there's a couple two Americans there. You're right. And Luke Lepardi won again. Wow, I didn't see that. That's yeah. He's that's won crazy. A lot this year. He was. It's, Yes, he's he's gonna get a world tour contract for sure. Yeah, there he is. He won a good sprint. It was a it was like a pure sprinter stage, one little vault in the middle, and then the whole field finishing together with him being the first guy there. So yeah, yeah. that's he's phew. And yeah. he's he's, yeah, he's carrying he's it up. Won, uh, three stages at the Tour of Japan, and the points classification. So I don't know if he's coming back for the U.S. to do nationals, pro nationals. He could, I guess, if he finishes. This race, but I don't know. Yeah, what doing. yeah. Doesn't have any upcoming uh, races on his program on the on the Pro Cycling Stats website. So maybe. I got 10, 10 wins for him this year already. Wow. Excellent. Excellent. That's, yeah. That's a good. Yeah, and he is twenty one. Twenty twenty years old right now. Now you're twenty one. He's born the end of on. Yeah, New Year's Eve. Yeah. New Year's Eve. So, my wife Carrie's birthday also. So yeah. it's <laughs> an unusual birthday. But yeah. It'll be, yeah, not till, not till 21 till End of the year. almost next year. Right. Wow. And I'll, uh, well, if we stay on the Americans uh, theme, we're doing well, which last year Nielsen Paulus was fourth overall at the Tour de Suisse. And yeah. so I don't know if I have more expectations for him this year. 
but uh, so far yeah, yeah. it's Magnus so, Sheffield that's been the best American in Switzerland. But there's yeah, still great stages to come at the Tour de Suisse. I think though, Roberto Rigoberto Iran may be the number one guy for um, yeah. for EF education. education, easy post. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Although, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's a little. So Sheffield got dropped roughly early yesterday. I didn't see what happened today, but I see that overall. He, He's ninth overall in Iran's tenth, <laughs> so um, maybe you know. The, I thought Sheffield got dropped before Iran yesterday, but maybe today. I, didn't, I have to look at today's results. See if that uh, Iran didn't do as well. dropped four yeah. places in Iran. I mean, Sheffield dropped five places today. Five in Iran, Iran four places. places. Yeah. 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 So they must have. So I don't know. So how far? I, I, I just gotta see how far Nielsen Paulus was down in case he could. No, he he's dropped 14 places. 36. He's now 18 minutes yeah. back. Yeah, no, not going to be fourth place this year. So I no, hope, but he's had such a good year. Yeah. So but, he's 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 pretty much guaranteed that tour start no matter what I think. So. Yeah, let's hope his form though is coming up and going to be peaking by July, yeah. so he can um, race as well as he Kevin, did last Kevin year. Kevin Kevin Mark had a really good day today. I think it was today. He moved up 13 spots. He was in the break. And didn't survive, but he still finished really well. So, yeah, DSM he, rider, young rider who started the tour last year, but then he crashed out what less than a week into it. So, possibly he could be back this year. I thought he was a good rider today. Yeah, wasn't isn't um Matteo Jorgensen there? Uh, Jorgensen is definitely on the tour team for well, Jorgensen. He was. They were, they were, he was riding really strongly again two oh. days ago. I watched the stage there, and he was, he was really strong. Is so. he there in Switzerland, or was he in... Oh, he was, he in, was in Dauphiné. No, I, yes, in yeah. Dauphiné. I, that's right. I, watched, I didn't watch much of the Tour of Swiss so far. I watched a little bit, but I did watch almost all of one stage in the, Duff, the Dauphiné, and yeah, he was prominently figured in that, too, although, you know, no great result, but I think that he's... Last year, he was kind of barnstorming a little bit like Paulus was earlier this year, <laughs> but I think that now Jorgensen's really kind of trying to hone things for if he had an opportunity for a good result he'd take it obviously but i think he's really looking at the tour so yeah well, let's hope so he's out of contract out of, out of the movie star contract i think uh, i had heard that he's going to yumbo visma next year so through the grapevine but we'll see um yeah that uh well we got so we got the tour de swiss just a couple stages in um even pool's back racing and yeah. looking pretty strong, but not Very not dominating strong. I mean, getting dropped some, but coming back. I mean, today he came back strong. But uh, I think the big story was by the Skelmos. Skelmos was right, like oh, yeah. battling with um, Paulus earlier this year. Now Skelmos has continued to be strong now, so I don't know. If it's fair to gauge those two together. I mean, Skelmos is a young uh, Danish rider for Truck Segafredo, and and they were both like you know battling um, one of those earlier stage races. But uh, Skelmos now yeah. got the, got the win yesterday. But Felix Golov was second. Who's who's wow? He's riding really well for Ajay du Jour, yeah. Austrian rider. But he hadn't had a, a professional win till till today, and so um, he took the win and the leader's jersey. It looks uh, Evan Pohl came in second, so he's sitting third overall. Um, I guess he would. I don't know. There's yeah, a lot yeah. of climbing to go. Who's who's going to be? Oh, and well, tomorrow's the next, last really big climbing big stage, and then it doesn't you know, finish on a climb, but almost it does, just comes down after the last climb. Yeah, yeah. and Skelmos too. He, you know, he was second at uh, Flush Vallon this year. Yeah, he's a good run. He's a good one for sure. How old is yeah. Skelmos? Let's look that up. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Yeah. 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 yeah but it's twenty-five, I think. And today it was too. I, I just read the report, and Evan Poole got dropped numerous times and it was, you know, a much easier finish and or not as steep. And then he came back and he finished second, as we talked about it just briefly beforehand, but it's craziness that he could be in such danger and people didn't take advantage of it. And then he's, you know, so strong and smart that he was able to still finish, you know, actually one spot ahead of Skilmos, so he picked up two seconds on him <laughs> in terms of the overall. And then because Skilmos was third. And so, yeah, it's crazy that, that he's able to do that. Um, but he struggled... He attacked early yesterday too, and and was pulling, you know, Skelmos and Gall, and then um, they both attacked him and, and finished ahead of him. It's but it's interesting to see that Evan Pole, he's just so strong and so fit that even when he 
is not writing as well. He's, he still does it really well. For sure. Well, yeah, he's, it's the same that he's not going to be at the tour, I think, yet this year. But that's not the plan. So he'll be next yeah. year. Um, they'll, cause if you get, like, all the top, I mean, I guess if Roglic, unless he changes teams, won't, won't be the top. Um, Yomo Visma, which will be a different name next year. But um, yeah, it would be fun to see a race where Vingago and Avonapool and Pagasha were all going head to head. Because then, then it makes it more, I think, interesting to have. Not you can't just follow one guy. You got to follow, pick who you're going to follow, who you can follow. It would be a really good battle. Yeah. Um, hopefully we'll yeah. get that. Yeah, and you never know who might then be showing good form. Who is not showing good form? Though I saw. Did you see Gardu? Yeah, was not racing very yeah, well. Yeah. Oh. But uh, Roland Bardet, another Frenchman for DSM, though he he yeah. was uh, attacking Titans a couple times today. today. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, like you said, uh, Rigo Berto Rand's still up there, and he's still he's still consistent, but not someone that's kind of. I mean, I guess you can never count him out. I don't, I don't see him being even up in the top five <laughs> at the tour this year, but. Um, Juan well, Uso, yeah, is he going to go help uh, Teddy Pogaccio? Juan Uso, the young uh, Spaniard for UAE. Yeah, I'm not sure what his plans are yet. Upcoming. I'll say no, it doesn't show. Carapaz, though, I mean, he's really supposed to be the BES yeah, GC guy for the yeah. tour. He hasn't, he hasn't shown he's, a he's, whole lot yet, he though. He showed he's, earlier in yeah. the stages, he did. He attacked earlier on at the Dauphine a couple of times. But then he got caught, yeah, he, and then, yeah. then he went out the back. So, you, yeah, it, not, yeah, not the form that you'd want six, to see him in. Yeah. Yeah. He was second in stage two. That's his best result in the, in the Dauphine. He did win the Maritime Classic, though. Right. So, uh, yeah, so he had, had some, a little bit of result, you know, but not a whole lot. No. <laughs> yeah, so we'll have to see. Right. I was um, looking at the... Uh, the climbing race up Mount Von 2 because I remember talking to um, Matthew Ricciacello about his next race and doing that, that he would do well there, but that then I saw they had to shorten it a lot because of weather. Oh, I didn't see that yeah, at all. So yeah, so it wasn't the big climb probably that Lenny Martinez won from huh? Cooper Ram. Oh, yeah. never seen Michael Martinez. was the second. He's and Simon Cook oh, yeah. third, yeah. Martinez has been, been riding really well. He's only 19 years old, and so with Gardu not racing well um, for, um, you know, Rambler your problem FDJ, yeah. right, they were saying that maybe he could be the main guy, but at 19, though. As, as you know, upcoming participation, though, is the Tour of Poland, Poland, Poland. Yeah. and then yeah. uh, the Vuelta, though. He'll do get his grand yeah. tour at the Vuelta, oh, so. Um, yeah. His debut, yeah. Or yeah, so that that would be good to see him at the, yeah, wow, he's he's got to be twenty on July nineteenth, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah, I so love they, it. yeah. So I, love it. So I did see, yeah, Richichello was fourteenth, just forty three okay. seconds back. I said, uh, due to weather, stage was shortened at ninety eight point three instead of originally planned one hundred and fifty three. The first passage of the finish line after the first ascent of Mount Ventoux was used as the new finish of the race. Wow, so they're doing a double ascent, like they did. Oh, right, they usually do two ascents of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like when and it was the one set. There was four guys that were together. So it was Martinez, Woods, Carr, and Rodriguez that were all together, and it looked like they sprinted it out with Martinez getting a sec, like one second by getting the win, and then the other three guys at the same time. So they, they probably, I might, mean, you, you think they were not knowing that it was going to be shortened, and then. On the climb, they told them it was going to be shortened, or do they do they pre-plan the finish being shortened? I would have thought they would have known before, but I, I didn't. We didn't do our homework, did we, on everything? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't know anything about the race, so you're, yeah. you're, you're telling us. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, good questions. Yeah. Good questions. But I did see, and I didn't look yeah. more about the, uh, the women's race in the Pyrenees, where they had a bunch of cars parked on the course, and so they stopped racing. Oh, I didn't see that either. You didn't see that either? No, mm. I think I saw that on social media about how um, oh, the riders complained, or what, but they stopped the stage, and then there were some negative comments about how they, you know, 
it wasn't that big of a deal. A bunch of cars on the course, but <laughs> they could have ridden it, but they weren't. They weren't happy about it. And they 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 stopped the race, I guess. The cyclists stopped it, or did they? Did well, the, the fishermen race... probably stopped it with the cyclists' input of. I guess yeah. we should probably look it up if we wanted to get correct it information. Race... But... Yeah, it says it says CIC Tour Feminine Pyrenees director calls riders "quote unquote" spoiled children. Yeah. After he's, yeah, I he canceled that's race. What I was to, so. <laughs> this is just reporting on headlines. <laughs> For us today, right, right, not right, get right. the details, yeah. but just interesting things going on in in the cycling world. Um, yeah, as it heats up, oh, man, I want a hot ride today in, in Sarasota. I had to go. I want to go hot. to the fish market. Yeah, it was in, probably ninety, but just hot. It was hot in the Netherlands too. I rode two days ago in the eighties, but it was wow. windy and it was cold. I rode in Michigan yesterday. It was forty nine at one point on our gravel pre ride of the coast to coast route that I'm doing. doing. So yeah, forty nine. So, uh, so what is yeah. the, the gravel coast to coast route? Is that is that an event coming up, or is that something? Yeah, race, doing? race. Yeah, when yeah. Is that? It start, starts week from Saturday, so the twenty fourth, I think it is of June. It's two hundred and four miles. Unbound was supposed to be two oh five. This is two oh four, one mile shorter, but. It has a ton of sand. We rode mile 150 to 177 yesterday, and oh my gosh, so much sand. It's just your tires are washing all the time, and it's going to be an adventure for sure. So, so where does it go um, from? Where does it yeah. start finish? So it starts in the Saginaw Bay, and it goes to Ludington. Ah, so yeah. east to west. So you could have headwind too, huh? Going to... Yeah, they said 67% of the time they have not had headwinds <laughs> in June, I guess so. So the majority of time, it's not it's not a headwind, but yeah, it could be. But you're in the woods a lot too, so it'll mitigate it somewhat. Yeah. yeah. So you, wow, so you had to drive drive a ways to get to that. Yes, three hour drive to get to the. So we drove from Canada, eight hours on Monday, and then Tuesday morning got up and drove three hours up to, uh, you know, near Cadillac area. And then rode for three and a half hours, and it rained, and it was cold. <laughs> it was so cold we had trouble getting our kit off and stuff. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, and then drove three hours back. So today I didn't ride at all. I, I had to clean the bike. It took me like almost an hour to clean the bike, and then I had to put a new chain on. Which the chain wasn't I think that old, but it was at Unbound and all this, you know, the race in Canada and crappy weather and wears out chains pretty fast, I guess. So. I had to put a new chain on today too, so no ride uh, today. But I'm gonna do a good five hours tomorrow. But um, yeah, but it was it's supposed to be in the mid to upper 70s here tomorrow. But it was, you know, 50s. But at one point it dropped into 49 degrees. So you're you were 50 degrees warmer wow, <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. Today, yeah. Right? today, yeah, today. <laughs> I I didn't I didn't use my new Garmin 530, which tells me how much I've heat acclimatized. How which I don't know how does it do that. How does it, <laughs> You get to ride so much in the yeah. heat. And what happens when I'm all the way done? And then it, no problem then riding in the heat, I guess, huh? It'll tell you 100% acclimated, yeah. yeah. I have seen that before. that you're acclimated to certain elevations or acclimated to the heat. But mine is now telling me I'm acclimated to the cold, not the you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, I've enjoyed that Garmin 530 because I, I did, it's got features I didn't know about. Like when I designed a course and send it to your – it was so easy to send it to the phone. Bam, it's right. Well, I designed on the phone. I mean, and then to send it to the to the head unit, super easy. It used to be you like designed you it find, Garmin Connect. Or yeah, Garmin or Connect, right on the on the phone yes. app, and then yeah. plugged it in. And then because well, riding here in Florida, of course, no hills. In the Netherlands, no hills. But I had put in a course in, in Nice, and as soon as I started a climb, boom, the graphic showed up like how far the climb was, gave color the percentage of the gray going up, and. I thought, well, that's yeah. really cool. I know because I I don't like riding somewhere I, where I don't know how far it is to the top. Like, how long do I need to keep? Well, you know, what kind of effort do I need to save? Because I don't know how long it's going to go. But yeah, no, I like that. Yeah, really cool. Oh yeah, the climb analyzer. It's it's great. Yeah, and even now the new 541 will anticipate. So right now, like I'm on 530. If you have a route, it'll tell you the climbs. But now the 540 even anticipates. It'll see where you're going. And it'll say, here's the climb. It looks like you're going to do this climb and tell you about oh, it through the climb true. analyzer. You don't have to have yeah. it planned in there. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Yep. And then it'll, if you turn off, it just stops. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, Very yeah, it's cool. crazy. It's good. Yeah. It's, I like it too. Yeah. yeah. Sure. I like that technology. Well, 
Um, yeah, let's go back to the racing a little bit. I don't know. The Dauphiné, is there, is there much else to... to well, just the Vindy was you know, obviously really dominant, for sure. And then, like you said, Adam Yates was second dominant. He was riding... They were each riding by themselves. <laughs> for, you know, some of the climbing, the top finishes, you know, so... Um, but, yeah, it's hard to say. Right now, nobody at the Dauphiné seemed anywhere near as strong as Vindigo. But they also, too, I mean, El Philippe hasn't been doing much lately, and he won a stage. Laporte, Christophe Laporte won two stages. Um, so it was good to see, you know, of course, Laporte really hasn't had too much of a downtime, but El Philippe, you know, since he crashed in the, this year's Strada Bianchi, um, or no, he crashed in the age of some of the age. Where did he crash? He crashed someplace, and he's just coming back now, but he was riding strong. He was riding sprightly and, and mixing it up in there and in the GC even for a little while, too. So, um yeah. Yeah, I'm you looking know, at the top, yeah. top ten here. He was tenth overall, Ala Philippe. Oh, still. Okay. Yeah. He was. Yeah, he was sitting in the top two or three for a while, but he lost quite a bit of time on on one stage. Yeah. Egan Bernal. Which he was in the break for that day. So yeah. he was in the break. He just got. Yeah. Egan Bernal was twelve, so he's continued to improve, but he's not back up to yeah. the level where he was. But that's good to see him riding well. And there's his teammate, the younger. Uh, Spaniard Carlos Rodriguez, he was ninth overall. He's he's just 22, so um, you know, what, yeah. what, like he and Ayuso, the hope for the Spanish riders, you know, the up and coming GC guys. But it was a, a trio of really good Australians who aren't aren't quite up that highest level though. Uh, ben O'Connor, Jai Hindley, Jack Haig, um, three, four, and five. So yeah, Jai Hindley, he's he's playing really strongly too. Yeah, so. Um, but Ben O'Connor, he was by the. Yeah, yeah. And Giant, yeah. You know, Giant, he's got a little bit more pedigree than Ben O'Connor, I think. But Ben O'Connor definitely was having kind of a breakout race for sure. He, he rode really well. Yeah. Um, Max Poole, the British rider, he was way up there. He's just twenty. He just fell off towards the end. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, man, he's he's gonna be really good. He's like too. The race yeah. Too, so yeah. Max Poole. Uh, but, oh, was, I, I know what uh, is, not, is the other race, but I forgot Tour Swiss. We didn't say about Vinian Gourmet. Vinian Gourmet, who was injured somewhere oh, yeah. this year, yeah. who last year, you know, really breakout season, you know, winning a state at the Giro, and then um, I'm sure he's going to be at the Tour this year, but he, he got the win over Walt Van Aert in the second yeah. stage at the Van Tour. Van Aert went early. He went like 320 meters out. <laughs> it was a craziness. Yeah. But Gourmet rode really well. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. uh, Enric Maas. He, I thought he was doing all right, but he was only 17th at the... Oh, you're breaking yeah. up a little bit. Just real quick about the Gourmet win, though. Okay, yeah. Oh, sorry. So his team was leading out to the right. He went to the left. Oh, right. And then immediately after he won, his teammate who got let out was celebrating and, and like, patting him on the back of the two. And I'm like, you didn't help him at all. <laughs> it was, you, you, got, you guys went to the far right. And then he, he just, yeah. It was funny. It was funny. A they took, wheel? So, like, we didn't make... Yeah, so he, he, there was two guys on the right, and then Gourmet just chose not to follow him, I guess, and they did a pretty good lead out for the guy that, you know, fourth or fifth is like that, too, but then Gourmet came up real hard on, the, on you know, as, as you were racing, the direction you're racing on the left side. But it was just funny how they celebrated so much, like, we helped them get the win. And, and early on, positioning and stuff, they probably did so much good and stuff, too, and it was still a team win, no matter what, but it seemed like it was, they didn't, they tried to do a good lead out, they actually were in a good position, he didn't take it, and then he still got the win. So it was, it was an interesting finish for sure. Yeah. So did he say I'd like to thank my teammates who got me closer? Oh, to he was mobbed by your teammates. So. No, I yeah. didn't. I didn't you know, he was, he was, it was. It was crazy. Like I don't know how they let those guys through. It was like kids and people oh. smothered him in a flag. <laughs> well, he he rides the tour because I where I've seen him race the Eritrean France are all. I didn't know there were so many Eritrean cycling fans. I mean, maybe they're the same yeah. ones that go everywhere, but it's gonna be. I've heard they follow him around. Event. Yeah, it's gonna be a big presence. I don't know what they do for work, how they, they do that. Uh, but, yeah, it's going to be a, a yeah. big presence yeah. at, at the tour he's racing there. It, it would be pretty significant for him to get a stage win there, too. It's going to it's a possibility oh, yeah. of some big significant uh, sprint stage wins with uh, Mark Cavendish going for the record and Benin Gourmet um, being first sub-Saharan African. No. Yeah. I don't know where, where you put it. It'll be significant. Yeah. Well, um, so, uh, 
Yeah. Also, also the, the, the Belgian tour, too. The, yeah, the Louise. Well, they, they got some yes. uh, good sprinters there, right? A lot of sprinters, yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Wilson, yeah. Jake, uh, uh, Christoph, Martin, you know, Vanderpool. Uh, yeah. 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 A lot of sprinters there. Phillips, yeah. Phillips is Phillips, winning over Phillips Jakobsen. Yeah. yeah. Phillips has had a good year so far. I mean, yeah. It'll be interesting to see how, how these. I mean, they're, everybody's in their final two tune-ups for the tour. It's got a couple of weeks, and we'll, we'll see. I mean, everybody's getting up to that form. I mean, that's why we wonder about some of these guys at the Dauphiné or even the Tour de Suisse aren't as going as well as we think they should be for this time. But, but we'll see. Kevin, you do. He's he's there that Belgian tour too. But he um, has had a couple of good finishes. He won a race. The Ben Markson Fences Classic, and then he was second at the Ronde de Limburg, and second at the, um, geez, Eifsten Ronde Brugge. So he's, he's had three top three finishes, including a win, just in the last couple of weeks. So, um, you know, he'll, yeah, he's, I'm sure, getting ready for the Tour de France to hopefully try and get, you know, he, last year he had a horrible one, so hopefully he can get some wins this year there. Yeah, well, Alexander Kristoff was fourth, and he's, he still keeps going. He's well, he's yeah. 35. Um, he's not. He's never been a pure sprinter. He's been a strong man, tough race sprinter kind of guy. But yeah, he continues to impress. Yeah. This part of his career. Tuning up the Tour de France, also. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, yeah, he, he won the. He, he won a stage in the Tour of Norway, which which was yeah. actually in his town where he lives, David. So, <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't get better than that, does it? So, uh, well, I hope we get to talk before the tour to really, um, you know, make our predictions or hone it in to what's going to happen this year's uh, tour. Actually, we we'll need to talk before because uh, during the tour, I hope I can follow it while I'm on vacation because I'm, I'm going to be on vacation for most of the tour. What? And, yeah, <laughs> I know. Where are, you, where are you going on vacation this time? Bali. Going to Bali, where, where, Indonesia. Bali. Yeah, so oh. I don't think they follow it so closely there, but um, oh. and it'll be big time change too. I don't know. I'll I'll figure it out, but uh, hopefully we'll get together before then. We we've got to do our birthdays today since it's one day. She was born the day before I was born, huh? Oh well, the, for me the biggest name is the, is number fifteen. Number fifteen on the list. Oh, uh, the speed skater guy. <laughs> Yeah, Eric Hyden. Eric Hyden. 65 wow. years old. He's 65? Oh, yeah. yeah, 65 years old. Yeah. yeah he's um, a, a orthopedic surgeon, I think. You know, he's been a team doctor for 7 Eleven, maybe Motorola. Still involved in the sport. Yeah. Well, he's in, I think he's in Utah now. No, no, John Hickox, who I just saw in the Netherlands, where he keeps my old Bianchi bike where I rode the other day. Um, he and I were at the Tour de France in 89 at the Prologue. And we looked to find the 7-Eleven team, and and, uh, and Eric Hyden was there, and we met him. Just, I mean, we met Johan Bernier. Wait, not Johan Bernier. <laughs> not Johan Bernier. We met um, um, BMC, uh, Amer longtime American team director. Help me out here, Andy. Oh, uh, Auschwitz. Jim Auschwitz. Yeah. Jim, Jim Auschwitz. Jim Auschwitz. And. Tyler Hamlet, you know, all the, all the guys that were with 7-Eleven then. We found them, they were just, you know, hanging yeah. out. Cause, but anyway, we saw Eric Hyden later on at the train station, and he, like, recognized us from before, and he, like, greeted us like like we were old old buddies already. <laughs> <laughs> he was super, oh. super outgoing, like, yeah, oh, he's, how's it going? So, yeah, I have a good memory he, he with racing. meeting Eric Hyden. He was, yeah, he was t team doctoring then? He wasn't yeah, a team doctor yet. racing then, no. Just with some the kind team of support or person. something, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Happy birthday, Eric Hyde, sixty-five. Wow. Um, yeah. Top rider though, Mattia Gazbazi. Not, not yeah. a lot of points at the for. He, yeah, he's turned forty. He won uh, six stages at Queen High Lake. He won the Giro de Toscana, della Toscana twice, and the GC uh, overall GC one at the Tour of China too. In 2015, Lankawa. He seems like he was on a, uh, that kind of a race circuit that um, those uh, Jelly Belly teams went to. You know, 
Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. But, but did well. But he had success. Really, yeah. 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 Second second place is a is a Portuguese guy. So Joachim Andrade, and he's seventy eight years old. Oh, yeah, and he was a 12-time stage winner of the Tour of Portugal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, wow, 12 stage between 65 and 78. Yeah, as well as the yeah. overall at so. 69. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Anthony Clark. He's 36. U.S. guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. No top result. How can he be that high up and no? Top Must have gotten result? points. 796 points. So pretty decent points. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. He was, you know, he was obviously raced a decent amount, and you know, got points and something. But yeah, he's uh, at yeah, thirty-six. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Doesn't even show what team he raced for or anything. Hmm. It says his place of birth is Agawam. T.J. Eisenhart, he's ninth on the list. Oh, yeah, twenty-nine, yeah. just twenty-nine. Happy birthday, T.J. Yeah, and he was—he's an artist. Right now, I've seen TJ a couple, a couple times. He's been involved in the Bookwater binge, and he auctions off uh, art things for the Nature Conservatory and Islands Nature's Conservatory in, in the Blue Ridge. So yeah, he's he's a good guy. He's a fun he's a fun guy. Yeah, he's, a little, yeah, he he's got the California vibe, laid back and yeah. easygoing. Always a smile on his face. Yeah, he's he's good to be around. Uh, yeah. Catherine Cumming is thirty seven. Happy birthday, Catherine. Uh, that's all the Americans I have on my list here. Paul Evans from Australia is 57. Is he related to Cadell at all? I didn't see. So, all right. He's probably not old. Right? He's like no. 57, not that. Un 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 uncle or something. But <laughs> not like oldest man. All right. Well, it's always good to catch up with you and catch up what's going on and, and find out stuff ourselves if we're not. Um, exactly. Yeah. Not, not being on top of everything, but you know, it's always stuff, good stuff going on in the cycling world. And I, I didn't change my um, VPN to so I could watch the Tour de Suisse today. I need to fi figure that one out. So, and also I thought I was trying to watch the Dauphiné on um, flow bikes because I still have my subscription, and it wasn't working on that either. So, I don't uh, know. Yeah, I'm not going to renew that one. That's just too much because Strava's going up. You know that. The price of I, I, yeah, I saw an article about that, and someone saying it wasn't worth paying anymore. They were, for them, it wasn't. Oh. They were going to pay more. So, who knows? But yeah, everything is yeah. Yeah. So it's but I, I haven't had flow bikes for years because yeah, it's pretty expensive for what yeah. you get. I think. Well, so. they, yeah, and they, and they hit you with it all at once too. So. Yeah, I think you get, you get national championships from USA cycling. That's that's the only exclusive thing I think you get. So. All right, Randy. Well, I hope it goes well right. for your next races and that the weather's good. And when yeah. you go on vacation? Not till July fourth. Oh, okay, so yeah. we should be able to get. Yeah, we'll do it. For sure. Next week. Yeah. All right. All right. Good. Good. All right. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Randy. Bye. Now.